Hello there, <laughs> and welcome to Hammerman. Holy smokes, finally getting a Hammerman out there again. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, uh, but this time, yay, internet. I've had it since, I, actually, we got the, uh, the internet back on Monday. I'm pretty sure it was Monday. Uh, so, hooray. Uh, I apologize for last week and the lack of Hammerman video. Uh, last weekend we actually went camping and it was funny because we went out into the bush and everything was fine because as it turns out without power and internet you, you can still light things on fire so no one cared and it wasn't until we got back that I was like no ah, and just kind of tapped out because we were still cleaning up from camping and whatnot and I figured all right next week but Going through last week, I tell ya, uh, that was a heck of a ride, man. Holy smokes, that was tough. Uh, so, alright, uh, I guess round two? Fight? And, uh, and, and fight we did, because as you can see, the first, first couple of, of stages of the Hammerman, pretty straightforward, you know, people run into guns and guns shoot the people. So that was nice and easy. I, what I did find kind of cool is, uh, because in the earlier stages this week, uh, there was a lot of riflemen, like, a lot, a lot. Uh, a lot, a lot. As as you can see, there's just like wave after wave of riflemen, and it kind of started to remind me of when you watch those movies of like old, like 1870s, you know, like the that that 19th century kind of warfare where they all dressed up in like red shirts or blue shirts and you'd have like a bunch of them stand in a line and they'd walk towards the other line and that line would shoot them and they'd shoot back and all kinds of silliness well it kind of made me think of that because i was just like wow just look at that it's like wave after wave after wave of riflemen and they're just like running into this wall of bullets and can't possibly stand a chance and yet they just do it wearing their ridiculous red coats uh, but you know then maybe that was getting too historic and whatnot because then we hit stage four and and like stage four hammerman really just dropped hmz on you like right first wave there it is wham time to go and I, I, I was I was kind of surprised because if you are a lower level, uh, that's like a legit strategy and, and like you can take out player bases by dropping that, you know what I mean? So um, what I would s suggest is if you're having problems working through the heavies before they make it to your valuable defenses, uh, maybe a second row of, of wall defenses before your flamethrowers and stuff gives the the rocket launchers and mortars and boom cannons and stuff like that a little extra time before there's troops right on top of them and things are going bad. As you can see, like, even, even with maxed out defenses, this is a tough sell. Like, those medics really do some nasty work. So, if you're a little bit lower level, Hot Pocket might be the way to go. Like, it, it, it'll give you the win for sure. It's just a matter of, like, if those extra parts are worth it. And, and the reason I say, like, you know, Hot Pocket might be the way is because if you need a Hot Pocket just to kind of, like, push you over the edge of Stage 4... Stage 5 is actually not too bad. Again, you are running into, like, the medic tank scenario. But if you get that hot pocket and some defenses on the right-hand side right up at the very front and just, like, hammer them before the medics can kind of separate in behind the, the riflemen and whatnot, uh, you, you can burn through them pretty quickly or you can let them run up in front of the tanks like I did. I really just got lucky right there where there were a whole bunch of medics kind of blended in with the tanks and my shock launcher just shocked them all and everything was pounding away on them and I was able to kill a couple of them off. 
but uh, stage five even is doing some work. But if you have that hot pocket right up at the front, everything's clumped together. You've got the, the riflemen, you got the medics, you got the tanks, everything's in there, and the hot pocket can just burn the snot. You can see where the peg is that uh, Hammerman lands to, I guess, for that stage. So if you put the hot pocket just in front of that, they should run right into it, and you can do all kinds of devastation without the, the troops even making it off the beach. And if it dies after that, that's fine. As long as the medics go down, that's all that matters, because it's it's those crazy medics that if they're, they're not down are going to make your life incredibly, incredibly difficult. Now, let's move on to stage number six. Uh, if you didn't need any prototypes before, you probably won't hear either. Because it... Well, first of all, obviously, Zuka's in the first boatload. Oh, God bless you, Hammerman. Thank goodness for that, because honestly, sometimes you need that, that bone, you know what I mean? Um, so... Make sure you've got all your rockets and, and shock launchers and stuff over on the left-hand side. Uh, if you're facing your base, you know, the top side of the beach, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, with some machine guns and flamethrowers to take out all of the warriors. And if you've got that, uh, and the wall to protect you, you, you should be able to burn down the Zookas before they get really... Uh, crazy like if if the Zookas run unchecked they will do massive fast damage to all your weakened defenses and suddenly you're, you're gonna be down like three quarters of your base and things are going horribly wrong and you don't know what's happened and you're just like why why and start questioning your life choices and like we really don't want to go down that path so just just kind of you know chill and drop Drop the defenses as laid out, and, and you should be able to get a pretty easy win. Um, obviously, with the remainder, like, my base is getting chewed up pretty badly, but it, it's kind of like an, uh, an inevitable fact that eventually the heavies are going to move into the safety ring of the rocket launcher, and the rocket launcher is going to polish off the riflemen, and once the riflemen are gone, like, the, the heavies don't really have the DPS to burn through the rest of the base. I'm pretty sure if, like, all of my defenses were gone right now and there was, you know, the 10 or 15 or 20 heavies, I don't think they'd actually be able to take out my base before the timer ran out. So, you know, it, I, I guess it is what it is. Don't worry too much about uh, that last wave. Just make sure you get rid of all those riflemen, and you'll be fine. Now, Stage 7, I know this is the one y'all been waiting for, because, uh, you know, like I said, the, the last, like, last week, I think Stage 6 was maybe even really tough. I can't remember Stage 6 off the top of my head, but I feel like Stages 6 and 7 last week were pretty nasty, and I think it was because of like grens and medics and all all the bad things that really destroy the poop out of a base um probably some zookas mixed in there i i don't know heavies for sure are gonna be in there maybe a scorcher every once in a while he throws out a scorcher um but anyways with stage seven as you can see the the, the i i was gonna call it the critter swarm but it's really more like a zerg swarm uh, where just so many riflemen get landed and I and obviously like I haven't been running any prototypes up until this point but you can see uh, all these crazy mofos are just drilling through my base with some effort and playing around I'm sure I could have found a way to deal with them nicely because it's just a bunch of riflemen like even if I had switched to my like crescent base with my little nugget of rocket launchers in the center I, I feel like there were ways that I could have taken seven out without needing the prototypes but the hot pocket was sitting there in the back and Boy, howdy, does that Hot Pocket ever ruin 
uh, well, like, let's face it, everything that comes within reach, especially when it's backed up by a damage amp. I'm pretty sure both the damage amp and hot pocket are level three, but who knows? Anyways, um, hammerman down this week. If you're careful, you can probably do it without wasting any proto uh, prototype parts, uh, because I really don't think you need to have the protos. And especially because I don't know if you've been to the trader lately, but the trader has the friggin' rainmakers, and I call them friggin' rainmakers because they do make it rain. Uh, but they're like, they're when you're being invaded by them, they are the most frustrating thing on the planet. But when you're attacking with them, they're really quite nice because you can almost cruise control. Just like drop them down in the corner and as long as there's no like prototypes floating around, grapplers obviously being one of the worst, uh, or what well, like even doom cannons and stuff, and just you, you drop them as long as you've cleared out the scary things and just sit back and relax. Uh, the, the shock launchers can be a problem if you're careful, obviously, take out the shock launchers and it'll make life so much easier. Uh, also, this attack is, uh, from at least my perspective, I'm running it completely unboosted because a, he just kind of popped up on my map and I was like, Fast Eddie, eh? Alright, let's see how fast Eddie is. Turns out Eddie is dead slow. Boom! Sorry, I, I really this this whole like random attack thrown on the end is just because I thought of the whole like fast Eddie is dead slow because he's dead and I'm I'm taking all his. All right, well maybe I didn't actually do it just for that. It's just because I had rainmakers and I was giddy. Can you blame me? Rainmakers, giddy. It happens. Anyways, guys, uh, hopefully the Hammerman stuff was easy. Obviously, you don't need any help with the Rainmakers because they're freaking Rainmakers. They they just, they, they win. Like, honestly, they should have just changed the name from Rainmaker to Windmaker because it makes wins. You, you drop them on a base, you get a win. I'm pretty sure I've cleared, like, probably 20 bases and maybe I lost one Rainmaker. Um, and, and, like unboosted just like in the middle of the day as I as they pop up while I'm in the middle of doing things I just be like hey you know what I'm gonna take this five minutes from installing the cold air intake and I'm just gonna oh look this guy is dead hey how's it going I right. in this case I happened to be in front of the computer because I was taking out Hammerman when he popped up on my uh, on my map so I kind of feel sorry for him anyways guys thanks for watching hopefully this has been helpful hopefully it's been entertaining and above all else, hopefully you guys have a fantastic day.